Hey guys, it's Michelle, and thank you so much for tuning in today. We are gonna be talking about Suku brushes. I'm really, really excited. So I purchased a set of these brushes uh, over the holiday season, Harrods was having like a limited edition uh, Suku brush set and it came in this big fancy gold box and it has this whole brush case and everything. So at that point I decided to take the plunge because uh, Suku is not sold here in the US and it always just seemed like, I don't know, kind of a pain to get these brushes and I'm so happy with the brushes that I have, the Chikahoto brushes that I have, Sonia G brushes that I have, my Hakuhoto brushes, my Surat Beauty brushes. I mean, there's plenty of lovely, beautiful brushes that are sold here in the US, but everyone always raved about Suku brushes. And in fact, I heard about Suku brushes before I heard about Suku makeup. So they're really, really known for their brushes. So of course, I just had to get some and try them out for myself. So the set that I purchased off of Harrods, the special limited edition one over the holiday season is no longer available, but each of these brushes are sold individually. And so I'll talk about each of these brushes individually. Um, I also uh, used the brushes today. And so I'll have a split screen of me actually using the brushes. So I'm going to share with you my thoughts on these brushes. I'm also going to do some comparisons with brushes that I have in my collection just to give you some reference if you have similar brushes like that and decide if you need these brushes or not. So I'm going to start from the biggest basically and go to the smallest. So first I want to talk about the Suku face brush and that's their big their big face brush. This is the one that I use to apply loose powder to set my foundation today. And this brush is made out of squirrel hair. I am not positive if it is gray or blue squirrel. Uh, blue squirrel is supposed to be uh, more expensive and softer than gray squirrel. And personally, you know, squirrel hair is is just, it's so soft as it is. I don't think I've ever really been able to tell the difference between blue and gray. So when it comes to brushes that use squirrel hairs, the squirrel hairs themselves are very, very fine. They're very soft. They're more fragile than goat hairs, than synthetic hairs, than uh, sable hairs, which are much more resilient. So these are brushes that as a kind of general rule, I never ever use in a kind of buffing or kind of back and forth motion. I like to be a little bit more gentle with squirrel hair brushes. So when it comes to this brush, and you'll see it in the split screen, when I apply powder to my face with this brush, I like to pat the powder on and then I like to sweep the excess away. It's not something I wanna do when I require like a buffing motion. So these hairs are incredibly soft. I would say that this is the softest uh, face powder brush that I have in my collection. So I'm just going to quickly compare it to uh, three other brushes that I have in my collection that are very, very similar. So the Chikahoto powder brush, this is the Z1 brush, which has powder all over it. This is the one that I probably use the most often. So I just wanna hold them up next to each other. I wanna say the size at the ferrule is uh, fairly similar and the hair length is very similar as well. So what I find interesting, and I don't know if this was purposely done because all the brushes that I'm gonna be talking about were made in Japan, they're handmade in Japan. And so each brush can look a little bit different from one another just because they're, they're handmade. All the hairs are like hand bundled. So the one thing I wanna point out, and again, I don't know if this was done on purpose, but these both have a round ferrule. And so this brush is just, it's very round in its shape. This is a Chikahoto one. It's very round in its shape. It's very domed at the top. This Suku brush I found really interesting because even though this ferrule is round, I felt like, and I don't know if you can see it, I felt like the brushes were laid in as if this was more of an oval ferrule. So there seems to be like a side to it. Like here is a flatter side. You can almost see it here. So these two sides are a little bit like flatter. And I thought that was really, really interesting. And what I appreciate about this is because these are squirrel hairs and because these are brushes that I wanna use in a sweeping motion, I like that there is a flatter side, that it's not completely round where I'm gonna be tempted to buff or where it makes a little bit more sense to buff. This kind of lends itself to being swept, which I think goes great with these kinds of hairs. So I really, really like that and appreciate that about this brush. So let me just compare it to the Surat powder or face brush and here is the suku so again the size is very very similar but the surat is much more um similarly shaped i think to the chikahoto z1 they both have that like egg domed shape top and then last but not least i just want to compare it to the 
uh, Beautylish Chikahoto collab that they did for Lunar New Year. This is a relatively new brush to me. And here is the Beautylish brush. And then here's the Chikahoto. So the Beautylish brush is actually oval. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's just slightly oval there. So here it is at its widest point and then it's a little bit thinner there. So I feel like the brush head is shaped a little bit more similarly between these two brushes because of that oval shape. All of these brushes are incredibly, incredibly soft, but what I have noticed with the Suku brush is that I find the actual like hairs to be even more flexible. And here I show it just kind of, I'm just applying the same amount of pressure um, to my face with the Suku brush and then I do the same with the Chikahoto brush and you can probably see that the Chikahoto they're just not quite as soft so I really really enjoy this brush I think it is a beautiful brush it is lovely it is incredibly soft if you have really really sensitive skin and anything less than like squirrel hair kind of irritates your skin then I would definitely give this a try and then the only like user that I wouldn't recommend this brush to is someone who really likes to kind of buff their powder in I don't think this is the brush for you you need something with more resilient hairs like goat hairs um, to really kind of like buff powder in this is definitely more for like a sweeping motion all right next up we have the cheek brush and this is probably one of the most famous suku brushes this was made famous by lisa eldridge she uses this in probably every tutorial video of hers and it definitely is what put suku on the map for me this is probably the first brush that i like you know ran to my computer and looked up so here's the brush again it's made out of squirrel hair and this brush I have to say I was a little bit disappointed in it really is it's so soft it's so soft and it's so feathery and it's so light that it really doesn't pick up a lot of product so here in my cutaway I'm actually using one of my Tom Ford blushes which is incredibly pigmented it is incredible i have to be with any other brush that i use i have to be so careful not to pick up too much product and with this brush i had to go in several times to pick up what i think is still a very very light application of this blush so if you're always looking for like a lighter application of blush or maybe you're just not a blush person but you do feel like you'd like to add a little bit of color this brush could be for you, but I personally like buffing my cheek products in. So this brush, again, just like the powder brush, is definitely one that you use with like sweeping motions. It's flatter, so it doesn't have like a round bulbous shape to it. So you really wanna sweep with this brush. And so for me and the way I apply blush and the way I like to apply blush, this is not the best brush for me. This brush actually reminded me very much of the Wayne Goss airbrush. So let me just hold those two up together. Now you can see that the Suku brush, uh, the hairs fan out quite a bit more. The airbrush is much flatter. And I like using this airbrush to apply um, like powder under my eyes because again, it's just like this Suku brush where it's so, so soft and it has such a delicate touch. I mean, just really, really delicate that I think it's great for that. But in terms of blush, I need a little, I need a little bit more, but it's a beautiful brush. The hairs are so soft, like so, so soft. This is probably the softest blush brush or cheek brush that I have in my collection. I mean, you can't, it's like you, almost, they're so soft, you almost can't even feel the hairs as they're kind of brushing up against you. Unimaginably soft. So that I definitely appreciate. This, I can't imagine this irritating anyone's skin. It's, it's like air. It really is like air. So let me just go ahead and compare this to the Syrah cheek brush God, I have powder over everything so the Surat cheek brush is has a round ferrule and it has very very soft brushes too but again this is a little bit stiffer these hairs are just so much more flexible than these I don't know if you can see that but they're just so much more flexible so a brush like this definitely suits me a little bit better this is still squirrel hair so I'm not gonna go like hog wild buffing it but I like using um, like circular motions to put my blush on and this just lends itself to it a little bit more and then here is the Chikahoto cheek brush so you can see how much larger the Chikahoto brush is versus the Suku cheek brush 
Ooh, before we move on from the cheek brush, let me just hold it up next to uh, Sonia G's Cheek Pro Brush. This has been my brush of choice lately, and you can see that it's just fluffier. It has more of a dome top, even though it is um, pinched, and it's not a rounded ferrule, but this is just much more my speed in terms of blush. I really like a little bit of a heavier application and to be able to buff it in. So that's the Cheek Pro, and the other blush brush that I really love is the Tom Ford number no. six brush. And this is uh, one of his natural haired brushes before they went synthetic. But again, you can see how, well, you can actually see how the Sonia G Cheek Pro is like a mini version of this. So you can see why I appreciate a brush like this. It's just not gonna be one that I reach for a lot. All right, let's move on to eyeshadow brushes. So this is the eyeshadow brush L or eyeshadow brush large. And I just wanna hold it up to um, another brush just so you can get a sense of really how big this brush is. So this is the Sonia G Worker One brush. So you can see how much longer the hair lengths are. And I love this brush. I don't have a brush in my collection that has a shape even similar to this. Yeah, I think the only brush I have that has a similar hair length is this Coyuto Red Squirrel brush that is very difficult to get. So here you can see that the hair lengths are similar. This one is still a little bit longer, but you can see how this is like a paddle shape brush and this one is a fluffier brush. And that's why I really appreciate that. This is basically like a large version of one of my favorite shader brushes, which is the Hakuhodo J5523. So here's the Hakuhodo. And this to me is like a very standard kind of shader brush size. And you can see that this is, again, quite a bit longer in hair length. And I had purchased a brush uh, from Chikohoto uh, in hopes of achieving what I achieve with this Suku brush. So this is a Chikohoto GSN 07 brush. So that's this brush right here. And you can see that it's kind of gigantic compared to this brush, which I think is a nice large size brush. So here in the cutaway, I'll show you that I use it just to lay down one collar over my lid. It's just absolutely great for that. It has a beautiful soft hand. And when it comes to these squirrel hairs, I think it's great for eyes. My eye skin is much more sensitive than the rest of my face. I think our eye skin is much more delicate than the skin on the rest of our face. So for me, it makes a lot of sense to use eyeshadow brushes that utilize squirrel hairs. Squirrel hairs are very difficult, and I probably should have mentioned this with the other two brushes, but you cannot use them, or should not use them. You can do whatever you want, but you shouldn't use them with liquid and cream products. Um, they're a little bit too delicate for that. So this is really just for powder eyeshadow, and it just does such a phenomenal job blowing out the edges with just with just like a few sweeps. And I'm using uh, Natasha Denona shadows, which are very creamy. They're a little like heavier, I think, in formula. And so for me, it usually takes a little bit to kind of like blend it out. And I was afraid with um, hairs that are so fragile and so soft that it wouldn't be like up to the task, but it really did a phenomenal job. It picks up a good amount of product and it lays it down so like evenly. It really is just such a pleasure to work with. So so that is the eyeshadow brush large. This is probably one of my favorite brushes out of this whole set because I like the unique shape and I like an eyeshadow brush with squirrel hair. I, I just love it, I love it. So that is eyeshadow brush large. So next up we have the Suku eyeshadow brush M for medium. And again, here is another brush shape that is I think very, very unique. So this brush, because it is uh, kind of like in between the length of a pencil brush. So here it is next to Sonia G's Pencil 2 brush. Sorry, this one's really dirty. Uh, you can see that the hair length is a little bit longer and you can see it's a little bit more narrow. This brush is really great for like smoking uh, stuff out. And this brush is, um, while eyeshadow brushes uh, sometimes come to a point for sure, the hair lengths are shorter than what I'm used to. Like here's the Sonia G Crease 2 brush and then here is the Suku brush. So you're not gonna get like a really kind of like blown out application with this. This is really uh, just a great, I feel like all around kind of tool. 
I used it to um, place the darker shadow on the outer corner here of my eye. So I think it's great for very kind of like deliberate placement of shadow. If you just want to add a little bit and then, you know, kind of like slowly blend it out, I think it's great. I think it would be great for um, along the lash line. It has a little bit of stiffness to it. So I think it could work nicely to like maybe smudge out or smoke out some shadow along the lash line. I think this could be great for um, crease work. I think this is just a wonderful all around tool. I just think it's so interesting because it's like not really a typical anything. It's not really a typical crease brush, pencil brush, smudger brush, blender, or anything like that. I, th I think it could be kind of like a jack of all trades. So, so this is a very, very interesting brush. And again, these are squirrel hairs. So this is another brush that I am absolutely loving. Absolutely loving. This is probably my second favorite brush out of this whole kit. And then finally for eyeshadow brushes, we have the eyeshadow brush F, which I'm guessing stands for flat, but this is like a more typical flat shader brush. So this brush I use today to lay down like the really uh, sparkly shadow that I have down. That's generally what I use like these flatter brushes for, uh, ones that I can't use with like liquids. I'll use for like sparkly shadows. For some reason, that's what I always associate them with. I think they pick up and hold product a lot better than like big fluffy blending brushes because they're not fluffy at all. Very flat, very dense. This is squirrel hair, so there's gonna be a little bit of softness at the tips here a little bit of flexibility, but I'm holding up the Sonia G Builder 3 brush because it is probably the closest brush that I have to this one. And you can see they're like fairly similarly shaped, um, but the Sonia G brushes are um, dyed goat hair. So this is a little bit stiffer than this one. Um, so this would probably be better for even more difficult uh, shimmery type shades, but I just used uh, the Viseart Liaison uh, palette, the nine pan palette, and those uh, sparkly shades in there aren't necessarily difficult to pick up or difficult to work with. But if I use like a synthetic brush or brush that's any fluffier than this, what I'll end up with is a lot of fallout and I won't be able to get a nice smooth placement of it. And you can see, I didn't wipe anything away, um, but you can see that I have like zero fallout from these shimmery shades. It just goes on really nicely. It just super smooth application. And this is a lovely brush. Let me just hold it up to some other brushes that I have that are kind of similar that I use often for the same purposes. Uh, so this is the Chikahoto GSN 9 brush. Uh, similar, the GSN 9 has a little bit of a longer, skinnier tip there. And then here is a Surat brush. I cannot remember the name of this Surat brush, but I will leave it down below in the description box. But this is the same deal, it's a little bit longer. This Surat brush actually is very, very similar to this Chikahoto brush. Like the shape is almost identical. It's probably a little bit flatter. So this brush is lovely. The bristles are incredibly soft. It's just, again, it's just, I, if I'm repeating myself at this point, uh, but it's a great brush. Uh, do I find it quite as special as the other two eyeshadow brushes? I don't because those had more unique shapes. This, I felt like I kind of had some in my collection that were pretty similar. So that is the eyeshadow brush F. Now, the rest of the brushes that I got in this set are brushes that I just don't use often at all. And I don't mean to say that I don't use these Suku brushes often at all. I just don't use these types of brushes often at all. So this is the Suku Lip Brush L. So this is their large lip brush. I use this once or twice to like clean up my lip line. I didn't even use it to apply lipstick and it works fine. It works great, but I just, I don't know. I don't use lip brushes that often and I don't really have much to say about it. This screw brush, okay, I do actually have something to say about the screw brush, which is fascinating me even because I'm like, it's a screw brush. But this is the softest screw brush I have ever come across. Usually they're pretty rough. Hold on, let me hold up this Anastasia Beverly Hills. Usually they're they're like rough. They're really rough. This one is so soft. It's actually amazing and I've been reaching for this more and more just to kind of brush out my eyebrow hairs before I go in with my fiber brow gel or pencil anything um, just to kind of get them to lay down or whatever it's so comfortable I mean occasionally I like that rough feeling I feel like I'm just kind of scratching my eyebrows and it feels kind of nice but this is just such a soothing like little spoolie I I really love this. I was surprised that Suku could like do anything different with these spoolie brushes, but they really, they really outdid themselves with this. Very fine and very, very soft spoolie. So that is their screw brush is what they call it. And then they have two eyebrow brushes. This is G 
and this is S. And I just don't really use eyebrow brushes. Very, very rarely do I put uh, powder or pomade or anything like that. So I just have never even used these, but this was also included in this set. And then last but not least, they have an eyeliner brush. This is eyeliner brush D. And I did actually use this today to apply some shadow as liner along my lower lash line. And it does a great job. It's a lovely eyeliner brush, but I can't say that there's anything terribly special about this brush. It's a nice eyeliner brush. So all in all, if I were to recommend some Suku brushes to you, if you're kind of interested in testing out this line for yourself, I love the eyeshadow brush large and medium. Love these, I think they're unique. I think they do a wonderful job. And I think if you're looking for shapes like this, or if you're, you know, in the market to try different eyeshadow brush shapes, then maybe give this a shot. Um, but that's the large and the medium. And I do really love the face powder brush. I think it is incredible incredibly, incre like I can't emphasize that enough, incredibly soft, soft, soft brush. And if you are looking for something really soft, like really, really soft, <laughs> this is the brush for you. So that is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.